Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this fixed beam by consistent deformation method. The span of the beam is given as 9 meter. In the beam there is uniformly distributed load 16 kN per meter. It acts in the left half. Then there is a point load 36 kN. It acts at a distance of 6 meter from the left support. Now let us find the degree of static indeterminacy. In this beam, the number of unknown reactions and movements are 4. The available equilibrium equations are 2. So the degree of static indeterminacy is equal to 4 minus 2. So we will get 2. To make this beam statically determinate, let us remove the vertical reaction RB and the moment MB. You can see that from the point B, I have removed MB and RB. So the point B becomes a free end. Previously, this beam was a fixed beam, but now it is a cantilever beam. Now let us draw the coordinates diagram. Let us keep RB as the first coordinate and let us keep the moment MB as the second coordinate. We know these two equations to find RB and MB. To find the displacements delta 1 1, delta 1 2, delta 2 1, delta 2 2, delta 1 L and delta 2 L. We have to find the moments M, M1 and M2. Using the given loads, we have to find the moment M. We have to make sections. In this beam, there are three different parts AC, CD and DB. So we have to make three sections, one in AC, one in CD and one in DB. You can see that I have made three sections, one in AC, one in CD and one in DB. I have made all of the sections at a distance of X from the point B. Now let us make a table. In the table, first let us enter the members. Here there are three members, BD, DC and CA. Let us enter them. In all of the members, we have made the sections. For all of the sections, the origin is the point B. Let us enter that. Now let us enter the limits. For the member BD, the limit is 0 to 3. For DC, it is 3 to 4.5. And for CA, it is 4.5 to 9. Now let us find the moment M in BD. Up to this section there is no load so the moment will be 0. We are going to find the movements from the point B. In this case we have to follow left hand side rule. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. Let us find the moment M in DC. Up to this section there is only one point load that is 36. It is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For this load we have to take this distance. This distance is x minus 3. We can multiply these two. We will get this. Let us enter that. Now let us find the moment in CA. Up to this section there are two loads. The point load 36 and the uniformly distributed load 16. The point load is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For this load we have to take this distance. This distance is x minus 3. The uniformly distributed load is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For this load we have to take this distance. This distance is x minus 4.5. We know that with the uniformly distributed load we have to multiply the distance and the distance by 2. We can multiply these two. We will get this. 
16 upon 2, it will be 8. x minus 4.5 into x minus 4.5. We will get x minus 4.5, the whole square. Let us apply this. Now, we are going to find the moment M1. For that, we have to remove all of the loads from the beam. And we have to apply unit load in the first coordinate. You can see that in the first coordinate, I have applied unit load. Let us find the moment M1 up to all of the sections. There is only one load, that is the unit load 1. About all of the sections, this load is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is x. 1 into x, we will get to x. Now let us find the moment m2. For that, in the second coordinate, we have to apply unit moment. You can see that in the second coordinate, I have applied unit moment. Now let us find m2. Up to all of the sections, there is no load, but there is unit movement. This movement is acting in the clockwise direction, so that it will be negative. Now let us find delta 1 L. The formula is integration of m m1 upon ei dx. For the member bd, the movement m is 0. So no need to make the integration. We can directly apply 0. For BD, the limit is 3 to 4.5 and for CA, the limit is 4.5 to 9. Then, let us apply the values of M and M1. Now, we can take a calculator and do these two integrations. If you do not know how to do integrations in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link, you can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and I have got these two values. Then we have to add both of them. After adding, we will get this. Now let us find delta 2L. The formula is integration of M, M1 upon EI dx. Let us apply the values of M and M2. For delta 2L, we will get 891 upon EI. Now let us find delta 1 1. The formula is integration of m1 square upon ea dx. We know that to find delta 1 1, we have to do three integrations. In this problem, the ea is constant. Also, for m1, we have same values. In this case, we can use a shortcut. We can do the integration only one time. For that, we have to apply the limits 0 to 9. For delta 1 1, we will get 243 upon EI. Now let us find delta 1 2 and delta 2 1. Both of them having the same formula. Integration of M1 M2 upon EI dx. For all of the three members, the values of M1 and M2 are same. So here also we can use the shortcut. x into minus 1, we will get minus x. For delta 1 2 and delta 2 1, we will get minus 40.5 upon EI. Now let us find delta 2 2. The formula is integration of m2 square upon EI dx. Using the shortcut, we can easily find delta 2 2, which is 9 upon EI. In these two equations, we have found all of the displacements. Let us apply them. So we can make these two equations. Now we can take a calculator and solve these two equations. I have used the calculator for RB I have got 40.167 and for MB I have got 81.75. Now let us apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0 and find RA. RA and RB are acting upwards so both of them are positive. The uniformly distributed load is acting downwards, so it will be negative and the distance is 4.5. The point load is acting downwards, so it is also negative. For RA, we will get a 67.833. Now let us take a moment about A and find MA. 
mb is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative the vertical reaction rb is acting in the anti clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 9 this load is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 6 the uniformly distributed load is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative we know that with the uniformly distributed load we have to multiply the distance and distance by 2 let us assume that ma is acting in the anti clockwise direction so that it will be positive finally for ma we will get a positive value that means our assumption is correct ma is acting in the anti clockwise direction now let us find the shear force values i have found the shear force values from the point a in this case we have to follow right hand side rule upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative using the shear force values we can draw the shear force diagram in this point the shear force becomes zero in this point there will be maximum positive bending moment let us make a section in this point and find the distance you can see that i have made a section in that point at a distance of x from the point a we know that in this section the shear force is zero using that concept we can find x for x we will get 4.24 meter now let us find the maximum positive bending moment the moment ma is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative R A is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 4.24 the uniformly distributed load is acting in the anti clockwise direction so that it will be negative we know that with the uniformly distributed load we have to multiply the distance and the distance by 2 for the maximum positive bending moment we will get 46.22 now let us find the bending moment in the point A. In the point A, we have the moment MA, which is acting in the anti-clockwise direction, so that it will be negative. Now let us find the moment in the point C. MA is acting in the anti-clockwise direction, so that it will be negative. RA is acting in the clockwise direction, so that it will be positive and the distance is 4.5 the uniformly distributed load is acting in the anti clockwise direction so that it will be negative we know that with the udl we have to multiply the distance and distance by 2 for the bending moment at c we will get 45 to find the bending moment in the point b and in the point d we can use the left hand side rule let us find the bending moment in the point B. In the point B, we have MB, which is acting in the clockwise direction, so that it will be negative. Now, let us find the bending moment at D. In the point B, we have MB, which is acting in the clockwise direction, so that it will be negative. The vertical reaction is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 3 for the bending moment at d we will get 38.75 here you can see the bending moment diagram in these two points the bending moment becomes zero these two points are called the points of contraflexure now in the points of contraflexure let us make sections and find the distances you can see that I have made two sections. The first section I have made at a distance of x from the point A and the second section at a distance of x from the point B. Using right hand side rule, we can take a moment about this section and get the value of x. Then using left hand side rule, we can take a moment about this section and find the value of this x. 
let us apply both of them 